Israel continues its mass mobilization of troops, hundreds of thousands, on the southern border with Gaza. The widespread expectation that a ground offensive across the frontier may be coming. But the UN is calling for essential supplies to be allowed into the territory where the humanitarian situation is deteriorating rapidly as Israel enforces a complete siege. The very latest from right across the region with our international editor Jeremy Bowen in the southern town of Biri. The Israelis have made a lot of progress in getting their troops prepared for that moment if and when and probably when the order comes to invade Gaza. In the fields and farms on the border wire, Israel's combat soldiers are creating jumping off points to invade Gaza. Late this afternoon at Kibbutz Be'eri, regular units and some of more than 300,000 mobilized reservists were preparing for the order to move in that most Israelis believe will come. The build-up that we're seeing here is certainly the clearest evidence that I've witnessed that Israel is preparing for a ground operation in Gaza. And if you add this to the formation of a war cabinet, you can see the direction they must be going in. Israel's allies are gathering. Antony Blinken, the U.S. Secretary of State, is flying in overnight from Washington. American support includes weapons and moving an aircraft carrier battle group closer to deter Iran's allies in Lebanon from joining the war. The United States has Israel's back. We have the back of the Israeli people. We have their back today. We'll have it tomorrow. We will have it every day. James Cleverly, Britain's foreign secretary, was already here in Israel at a frontline town near Gaza. I'm not going to speculate on what support we might want to give. I'm here to find out. I'm here to find out what uh, practical support we can give to Israel. The foreign secretary was hustled into a shelter when the sirens went. Israel has the four square support of its allies after the massacres perpetrated by Hamas. In their safe rooms, millions of Israelis are praying, waiting often frightened now that assumptions they had about their safety have crumbled. Their government says what it's doing in Gaza is defending them. But only a few miles from this family in Ashkelon, Israel's onslaught raises questions about whether it's breaking the laws of war. In Gaza, Israel has caused immense damage in only five days. International humanitarian law obliges belligerents to protect civilian lives. Israel says all this is legitimate self-defense against Hamas. But it's also cut off supplies of water, food, fuel, and power to more than two million people and killed hundreds of civilians. Outside the main hospital in Gaza City, Ala al kafane sits with the bodies of his entire close family. They'd moved twice to escape the airstrikes until one hit their borrowed apartment at four this morning. I've lost my father, my brother, my uncle, two cousins, two other family members and my pregnant wife. I'm the only survivor. He said, we've done nothing. Israel insists Hamas is to blame for the suffering of Palestinians. But accusations that Israel is answering the war crimes of Hamas with ones of its own have started. Back in Israel, videos are still emerging from the Hamas attack last Saturday. Security cameras showed two women trying to escape a Hamas gunman. Somehow he misses them. Armed Israelis arrive and the man who wanted to murder them either retreats or is killed. <laughs> and at a hospital near Tel Aviv, signs of the tension in Israel. A visiting government minister gets a furious reception. A nurse yells they've been helped by every kind of civilian, but the government has given them nothing. The military buildup might steady Israeli nerves. And the defense minister said tonight, we will wipe Hamas off the face of the earth.
Jeremy Bowen, BBC News, in southern Israel. Well, Palestinian media say the only power plant still operating in the Gaza Strip has now stopped working after running out of fuel. And as we've been hearing, there are more than 200 targets that have been hit by the Israelis in airstrikes overnight. And these images show the level of destruction. This is the Rimal area before the strikes. And this, a satellite image of the same neighborhood, which came through yesterday and has been located by our colleagues at BBC Verify. More than a thousand people are now known to have died and a quarter of a million have been forced from their homes. Well, Gaza is, of course, under siege and communications are extremely difficult. But we can talk now to our correspondent, Rushdi Abu Alouf, who's live in Gaza City for us tonight. Rushdi, just tell us what the last few days have been like living in an area under siege and under constant bombardment from the air. Yeah, I can see I have been witnessing the heaviest air strike in my 20 years covering of this story. It was by far the heaviest I've been witnessing what the destruction in this Rimal neighborhood. It's the, for a very long time, this neighborhood has been the uh, safe haven for most of the uh, Gaza and most of the streets in this neighborhood was, was destroyed. I was among the families who were like uh, 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 suffering on uh, during the days. But the humanitarian side of the story is, is, is moving in a very significant way. When we have, when we, when uh, like two million people lost the electricity today, we are talking about the essential services such as medical services, water supplies, food supplies are being suspended because of that. The humanitarian corridor for letting uh, uh, food and medicine and fuel into Gaza is a must, is a call from every Palestinians. That why we understand tonight from a senior Egyptian official that Egypt is working closely with other uh, countries and contacting Hamas and Israel to try to find a, a, a draft of six hours to allow uh, goods and fuel to come from Egypt into Gaza. And Rushdie, what about the suggestion, the possibility of a ground invasion? We heard from Jeremy Bowen that the more troops are massing on the border with Gaza uh, across in Israel. How are people feeling about the possibility that there could be a ground invasion? This is the most worry for the people. People in Gaza fear this because they have lived through a, a ground invasion before. Back in 2014, we have seen Israeli tanks in refugee camp. We are talking about a camp in the north, like when 100,000 people live in a very small, tiny piece of land. If uh, people are already exhausted by 3,000 uh, airstrikes and 1,100 people died only from, only from uh, air what the soldiers and tanks are engaging in street to, to street and house to house fighting with Hamas in Gaza with 2 million people living in this tiny piece of land. OK, we'll end it there. Rushdi Abdullah, thank you very much indeed for joining us live from Gaza, where communications are obviously incredibly difficult to establish and to maintain.